God, he's had so many great songs. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this year marks 40 years since Paul Young released his album No Parley, which made him one of the best-selling artists and, of course, one of the big heartthrobbers of the 1980s. Well, he hasn't changed, no. but he is taking a trip down memory lane with a new memoir and a tour, looking back on some of his biggest career highlights, from performing with George Michael to stepping in for David Bowie on one of British music's most iconic mega-hits. And here he is in the studio. I love the way you sort of look, thinking, what are they going to mention? Which, which part <laughs> of my life are they going to bring up? How are you doing? Good, yeah, yeah, there's so many little bits, you know, I've had to go through so many bits in the book, and sometimes things come up, uh, and I think, oh, I didn't put that in. And then <laughs> there, there was even a point where the book, we had to do a, f a finishing point. Yes. At 91, and I still thought, oh, yeah, but this happened in such and such. So then when we do the book tour, I can tell those stories. And there's a lot of backstories as well mm -hmm. behind, you know, the build-up to the Freddie Mercury concert, for instance, the rehearsals, that type of thing. Well, tell us, I mean, to distill 40 years into uh, a series of highlights is, is tricky. Yeah. It's a beautiful book. You describe it as a, as a coffee table book. It's wonderful. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about some of those highlights. The moment that you stepped in for David Bowie, yeah. now that was for the, the Band-Aid Band Christmas record, single. Which, which is still, I'm, I'm still, uh, I, I still question that because Bob said that wasn't the case. But I happen to remember David Bowie was the other side of the world and I, ex I assumed they'd have a big name at the front of the record. You know? Well, you well, were the, the big name. Singing the first line. I was, yeah, but then I looked at, the, once again, when I did this book, I looked at a photograph of everybody on Band-Aid. I thought I was the I was the most recent star in there. <laughs> so when they gave me the bit in the middle of the song, and I just did, here's to you, raise a glass for everyone. I thought, well, that's you know, you've had, you've only had one one album, son. That's your part. But you know? then you get the opening line. But then I got the opening line. Have we got, Stuart? Have we got the later. opening, the iconic opening line of? No, we don't, Brad. Just sing it for us, would you? <laughs> it's Christmas time. There you go. There's no need to be afraid. Now, the thing about moments of, of history in one's own story yeah. is that very often we don't realise when they're happening that they're happening. It's not till later that the penny drops. Oh, yeah. did, did you know that when, you were, when, they, when they said, you, can, you do the, can you do the opening line, did you know that was going to be...? No idea at all, no. 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 no, two things. I was sure, I actually thought, if they'd just written these lines, so they're asking me to test them out, because <laughs> everything was getting done on the hoof. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they were trying to do it to break as many records as possible. So, um, so they did that, and I didn't know until the record came out, and I heard it on the radio. And then I thought, well, you know, how much money do they need uh, for Ethiopia? It will probably be... It's going to make so much money over Christmas that this record will be a 1984 hit, and then we'll never hear it again. Uh -huh. but, which is wow. totally wrong. It'll be on your so, tombstone, mate. <laughs> so now, obviously, it takes on much more significance. Yeah. And they changed the wording of it, didn't they? Because um, the way that we think about these crises changes. I mean, there was that line, tonight, thank God, it's them instead of you. Yeah. And that... I, I wonder whether in the studio that felt like a gut punch or whether anyone you know, sort of bristled at it, or whether it just felt like a powerful line at the time? I think it just felt like a powerful line. And mm. I think they they felt it was the powerful line, what, the punchline, as it were. Mm. And so they they got the guy that would deliver it the best, you know. So many, so many people who had the kind of success that you had, particularly at that time, in the 80s into the 90s, it, frankly, it ruined them as human beings. Uh, they became I, 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 words that I can't say on, on, on sort of family television, but they, they really put themselves beyond the pale. Success poisoned them, mm -hmm. made them toxic, and, and they remain that broken to this day by their own success. That never happened to you. You, you always... I mean, whenever... I mean, I've interviewed you loads of times over the years, and I'm always really pleased when I hear you coming on, because mm. you're, you're such a good bloke. Did you have to work at your success not changing you for the worse? Uh, I could have stamped my foot on the odd occasion every now and again, yeah. you know, get a bit petulant. It's mostly through tiredness and and you're expecting things to get done and they don't get done. And, and uh, I mean, the schedule I'm working to at the moment, I don't think I'll be doing that at my age, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so I have to keep on top of but it. Did but did you have to tell yourself, don't let it, don't let it go to your head, Paul? Yes, and also uh, my mum and my family are very easygoing family, so we tend to just get through it. I mean, 
and they did do, I mean, years ago, they did a gotcha on me, you know, and at, uh, for Noel Edmonds, and they couldn't break me. And it was so hot in Florida where they were filming this thing. In the end, the crew were going, can we just finish this and tell him that it's a joke, you know? <laughs> because... Well, because you I, behaved impeccably I behaved throughout. Through, yes. <laughs> yeah. You didn't throw your toys out to the no, grab. Do you that, know yeah. who I am? Have you, ever, have you ever uttered that phrase, Paul? Uh, no, I normally say, do you know who I used to be? <laughs> a joke, you know. but, um, no, but it, 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 it was so hot. And also, every time... Cos so every time we went to film something, they would make something go wrong. Someone walks in front of the camera. Yeah. And I would go, oh, well, it wasn't his fault. You probably didn't know. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> and they would switch me and go, who is that idiot? Uh, You're looking good. Is that in the jeans or do you, or do you work at it? Um, I work at it, but I don't work at it excessively. <laughs> right. Did you gym? say that you are a, the same age? We're you, both you born in 56, aren't we? Yes. Uh, yeah. ch ch children of the 50s. Isn't that, doesn't that sound a long time ago when you say it out loud? It does, 1956. Yeah. I know, yeah. It, 11 it, years uh, after the war have, ended. When you have to <laughs> scroll down to put your date of birth, it's not very pleasant, <laughs> is it? And do you read things in the papers about 67-year-olds and you think, yeah, old man, you think, yes. oh, hang on, that's you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I go, oh, yeah, this old guy. And then I get reminded, they go, yeah, but you're 68. I went, yeah, well. No. <laughs> well, good luck with it all. Thank you very much. It's just great to see you. The, the tour, very quickly, is you, 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 sing, you, you sing the big hits, but you, you tell your stories. Yeah, back Still stories tell to a lot stories. of the things yeah. that happened. Yeah, yeah. It sounds a really good thing. Mm. Yeah. And the album is Behind the Lens. Yeah. Good to see you. Great to see you, Paul. Thank, Thank you so you. much.